So in this video, I'm going to talk about the embryology of the face and the basic points that you need to remember, which are important where even cleft lip is concerned. So this may seem a little confusing at first, but in fact, if you think of the anatomy of the face and retrospectively think of the embryological development, it becomes quite simple. So the basic points that you need to know are that there are three main processes involved in forming of the face and I'll explain those as we go. Uh, so this is the basic part of the embryo where the frontonasal process, which is one of those three processes that are important in development, uh, it develops from this part. So this is actually the uh, mesenchyme which is overlying the fore brain and uh, this is a part of the pericardium and the stomatodium which forms the primitive mouth lies between these two structures. So the frontonasal process is the one that is a single process which will develop in the midline from this region. The other two processes will develop from the first arch. Now that's why in my previous video I had taken the pain of explaining all the pharyngeal arches because this first arch is of importance um, over here. So the first arch that is the mandibular arch uh, gives rise to two processes which are the maxillary and the mandibular processes. Now they are paired processes on either side. So the frontal nasal process was a single midline one and these two are the paired processes. Also there will be the formation of these nasal placodes and nasal pits which will give rise to the medial and the lateral nasal processes. Again they will be important when we talk about the formation of a cleft lip. Now the orientation of the face is not um, coronal at the beginning so the eye is actually placed laterally and then when the uh, fusion of these processes will take place the eye will come in its anatomical position. So as we go along embryologically the next formation that will happen would be something like this. So this is the midline frontal nasal process. Here the nasal placodes have developed and they form the medial and lateral nasal processes. Eye is still in this primitive uh, position and you can see further there has been the development of the paired maxillary and the mandibular processes. Now this is the final picture that we are going to uh, see. What is important is the fusion of all these processes which looks then something like this. And it's a little funny picture but it's going to basically summarize all the processes together. So uh, the midline frontal nasal process the medial and the lateral nasal processes, the maxillary and the mandibular processes. So now if we start from above downwards, you can see that this frontal nasal process in the midline is going to go all the way up till here and it is going to help in the formation of this part that is of the upper lip which is going to be the future philtrum. Now the upper lip on either side is going to be formed by the fusion of these paired med, uh, maxillary processes along with that of the lateral uh, sorry along with that of the medial nasal process so don't get confused between the two processes so the maxillary with the medial nasal process will ultimately give rise to the uh, unilateral cleft lips which can be complete or incomplete or the failure of fusion of this maxillary process with the lateral nasal process can give rise to a formation of an oblique facial cleft and that travels from the eye to the mouth. Now the upper lip is formed in this way where there is a fusion across the midline of these maxillary processes and in the center with the frontonasal process. So it forms sort of a T-junction. It is much simpler in the case of a lower lip and the chin where both the mandibular processes will meet across the midline and they will form these structures. Now the remaining part that is the cheek has an upper part and a lower part where it will be formed by the maxillary and mandibular processes fusing on their own respective sides. So that is all that you need to know in the basis for these embryological structures. So the unilateral or the bilateral cleft lip will happen because of the failure of fusion of these medial nasal and the maxillary processes. Midline defect will occur when the frontonasal process gets involved. This part however remember that is the mouth is formed by the stomatodium that was the primitive mouth. Now the lower lip 
is formed we saw by the mandibular processes and failure of fusion will lead to a rare cleft like this which will be in the lower part in the midline extending to the chin oblique facial cleft was of the lateral nasal process and the maxillary processes again uh, failure of fusion of a maxillary and mandibular processes can lead to a lateral facial cleft so there will be a cleft from angle of mouth extending to the ear it can lead to a macrostomia or microstomia now cyclops or proboscis something which was important even in mbbs times was that uh, along with hypertelorism certain terminologies like that you need to know so in the case of proboscis there will be a single nasal protuberance the primitive one and there can be fused eyes which is the cyclops or there can be uh, a bifid nose where these processes have failed to fuse with each other and there can be a condition also known as hypertelorism where we know the distance between the pupils is more finally the treacher collins syndrome again like i had mentioned in the pharyngeal arches is important because it's a defect of the first arch so first arch which was leading to almost all these structures of the face and it will also be mentioned again when we see tessier's clefts so that is all you need to know about the embryology and i hope this will help you uh, in understanding cleft lip better